Hey guys. What, you gonna join? Come on. You wanna see how we made this cool table? Stay tuned. What's up guys? So today, I'm gonna work on making a hockey team themed coffee table out of some extra chunks of walnut that I got laying around. It's gonna be a river table style. So first I'm gonna determine what size I want this. And as I believe this is my smallest piece, so 21 and a half, I wanna make this a square. So we'll make the width 21 and a half as well. And for me, luckily, I have this beautiful two foot by four foot mold that we use for coffee tables. So we're gonna fit this in here, add a couple little blocking walls before we pour our epoxy. So to make it get in the mold a little better and so we don't waste too, too much epoxy, I'm gonna cut these up to square ends. And luckily enough, from my last cuts from me, those ends are already square. So I know this is my shortest one. I'm gonna mark that, figure out what my length is of 21 and a half. I'll transfer that onto my second piece here. These don't have to be perfect right now. This table, after we pour our epoxy, is gonna get cut down. I'll probably take a half inch off the entire thing uh, to square it up. And then there's a bunch of ways you can square this up. Table saw, miter saw. I always just use my Corbis skill saw. Works great for me. I just got a scrap piece of wood here. I'm just gonna cut it straight in half to make my two side pieces. So this one I can run a little long, it doesn't matter, I'll just butt to this one. But this one, that's going to go this way, needs to butt into the back of that one. So we're going to have to measure that one out and figure out our length, which is 21 and a half. So now that i got my pieces for my little perimeter here, I'm going to take them and put some tuck tape on them. So here in Canada, we have tuck tape. But uh, it's also called Tyvek tape. Sometimes it'll be white. Um, if you're using Nylon, you can just put some mold release spray on it if you have that. Not a lot of people have that kicking around. But for me, these are some old scrap pieces of just a white painted trim wood. So I want to cover them in this because the epoxy will not let go of that wood, even with mold release. So to caulk this and seal it up, I like to use this. Just a, a paintable caulking. Uh, I find I never have leaks with it. I don't have it sticking to the epoxy, so it's worked really good for me. So I'm gonna take my side piece here, just move my whole mold, what happens? Put a nice healthy bead along the bottom and this edge is going up the wall. So my angled edge, make sure I get good coverage. And this back edge that's going to bump into that other rail. Stick her down. Just gonna double check that I'm where I want to be. I'm gonna do the same to this guy. Now I'm gonna add just a brad nail where these two meet, and then everything else can stay how it is. I'm gonna take these pieces out. Be very gentle to not move this side because it's just got caught. And I'm going to run a bead along the entire inside of this. So now that I got all that caulked, I'm just going to take my finger and just wipe her smooth. And now this mold, once it dries, should be good and not leak. Should be. Sometimes it still leaks. Before we pour any epoxy, we've got to clean up 
all these live edges, get all this dirt and debris off of it. I like to hit the face and the back as well. So to do that, I just get these cheap little wire wheels from Amazon. They go into a drill. They work pretty good. Uh, they're cheap. If you lose them or break them or they wear out, it's not a big deal. Wear safety glasses, which I don't do a lot. But I just like to take a clamp, clamp it to my table here. Just to stop it from moving around a little bit so I can get to work. So this is kind of the difference. That's that original. It's pretty dirty and gritty. And this one's been cleaned up with the wire wheels. We've got that edge just a little nicer, a little less dirty. There's less debris that's going to come out. Once I get both of them done, I'll get the sander out and give them a fish stuck with the sander. One tip is I do like to kind of keep my drill battery on the peak. It allows me to kind of work that like a leverage so this thing doesn't grab and kick. Kind of gives you something to pry, uh, pry against and rest. So now I'm going to take my sander. I've got a Festool Rotex. Very good sander for getting rough sanding done. Not amazing for doing finished sanding on epoxy, but it works. That's all I got. So you can get it done with something like this. This little five inch Mastercraft and the DeWalt and Rigid and all those ones work as well. Just takes a little longer. And so I've got this 3M extract. This stuff's really good for epoxy. Doesn't clog up as much, uh, lasts a lot longer. For just scuffing up this wood, it doesn't really matter, but got it so might as well use it so we're going to hit both faces the front and the back just to kind of clean them up a bit so there you go got all cleaned up. now we just got to wait on that mold uh, if we if i was doing a lot of sanding i would definitely hook this up to my vacuum i'm just stuffing them up it would have taken me longer to put it into the vacuum system than it took to sand it so sometimes i choose to just be an animal now that it's the next day, we can get in here with our air compressor and blow out all the dust and dirt that have fallen in it over the night and all the sawdust. And we're just going to place our nice clean pieces in here. I've got my whole mold up on a couple 2x4 blocks so that I can fit my clamps underneath it. Then I'm just taking these chunks of wood that I've wrapped in Tyvek tape and another scrap piece of wood to clamp this whole thing down. It's definitely worth taping these blocks. So that any of your overpour won't stick to these blocks and you'll have to cut them off. It'll be a nightmare. This way they just pop off with a hammer. Now to do our ice on the bottom, I'm going to use this epoxy from rusty designs out of Ontario, Canada. The price is extremely good. I haven't found anybody whose price is anywhere close to what they charge. And it's a very good epoxy. We've never had any issues with it. Uh, this is for our bottom ice coat. And then we have this slow cast that we'll use after to fill up the rest of the mold once we're done, once we get there. So don't use a flood coat or a casting epoxy to do thick pores. We're going to end up doing about two inches with this act. So the only downside to this is it is 2.7 to 1 for the mix ratio. So you do have to do a little bit of math to get your numbers correct. Can't stress enough how well you need to mix your epoxy. Take as long as you need to make sure it is very well mixed. You can't fix unmixed epoxy. Definitely want to always get a stir stick out if you're going to do that and scrape all the sides and the bottom. Uh, the only problem with mixing with the mixer sometimes, especially with this, is it adds a lot of bubbles to it. Uh, for this hockey table, it's not going to be an issue. And with the flood, the slow cast, where it dries a lot slower over two to three days, uh, it gives it enough time that you can get all the bubbles out of it and pop. 
uh, and it's not an issue. So this is a new liquid colorant that I'm trying. So we're just going to put a bunch in there and give it a mix. See what it looks like. We've got our piece clamped down. Our epoxy should be nicely mixed. We'll pour it in. One more stir with the stick. Make sure all those sides. Now we've already cleaned this mold, sprayed it out, and because this is going to have the sides visible, I want to make sure I don't get any of this up on the edge of this. Now we're just going to pour this amount, let it set up, and if I feel like I need to make this a bit thicker, we'll do a second pour but I don't want to go too thick on this and start filling up those sides and make a mess so that we see it once we pour our clear on top. I did end up adding a second layer to this. Now for everyone's favorite part. Fire! The reason we use the torch is it pops all the air bubbles and it helps flatten out this uh, top coat epoxy that we're using to make it nice and glass smooth but you definitely need to use this to pop all the bubbles you can use a heat gun as well now to put all these lines on here I have a machine called a Cricut and it cuts vinyl stickers and logos uh, you could cut these by hand or I'm sure locally you could find somebody that could cut these for you and these just stick right down before you stick it down though you need to scuff up that dried epoxy uh, I generally use about a 400 grit to scuff it up so that this sticks and so when you pour your next layer of epoxy on top of it, it will stick too. On this one I wanted it to look more like a video game style, cartoony, not like a super serious ice rink. So we didn't do it exactly how a normal ice rink would be, kind of more like how you would see it in a video game. And the beauty of doing it like this is if you place them in the wrong spot, you make a mistake, they peel up very easily and you can fix it over and over again. And now it's time to pour our epoxy. I've mixed up a couple liters of the slow cast rusty design epoxy and I'm just going to put it on clear with no tint or dye or anything in it. And I've mixed up a bit extra because I've got a second project I'm pouring it into. Right. And then we use our torch again to pop all these bubbles. Uh, I'll do this once and then I'll wait about a half hour, come back, do it again. With this slow cast, you generally don't have to come back again. These will mostly pop by themselves. It's just fun. Houston, we have a problem. I'm not sure what happened, but something went wrong. So I was kind of testing the limits on this Rusty's Designs epoxy. It's meant for two inches thick. And so normally I wouldn't do that in one pour, but I decided to give it a shot today or yesterday. And uh, it didn't turn out great. Uh, you can see the two different colors is because the center is hard as a rock and the edges are gooey stick my finger in it uh, and this is only about 12 hours after the pour it should not be this hard at this point obviously this got a little too hot at this thickness and boiled a bit in the center uh, it was only about at 55 in here so it wasn't too hot but we'll uh, have to see if we can save this uh, the center at about the 12 hour mark fully cured as you can tell this like lighter color and then the whole perimeter took another about 24 hours to 48 hours to cure up so the center is a very different color and it's really got a ton of bubbles don't know if we're going to be able to save it but we'll take it out of the mold put it on the table and let it cure for a couple more days
that's the beauty of these molds is they just come out so easy. That's what she looks like coming off the mill. Uh, I use a router sled with linear rails. I'll do a more in-depth video on how I make that and how you can make one at your shop. Uh, you just need a really flat table, a decent horsepower router, and a milling bit. Now, out of the mold, the back is generally pretty flat, flat enough that we can mill the front side, and now we can flip this over, mill the back side. But since we've put that thin layer of white for our ice effect, we have to be careful we don't mill too deep, or we can mill right through that and destroy basically everything. When I'm milling through epoxy and wood, I only like to take about a sixteenth of an inch pass at a time just so I don't burn out my bits and if you go thicker on the epoxy sometimes you can start getting tear out and chip out and it just doesn't look good. I found that's the depth that really works for my setup. And then I lost some of the footage. So once we were done milling it, I took it out to my table and we squared it up, cut it all to our final size and I hit the entire thing with 80 grit sandpaper with the Rotex. And then I took a 22 degree chamfer bit and put a chamfer around the whole top of the table. It's not something I normally do, but I just wanted to try a different look on the top. So tell me what you think, if you like it or not. Then I'll take my palm sander with 150, then 120, and hit the entire perimeter of the table, making sure to soften all those edges that are left from the router bit and cleaning up any saw marks from the saw that I used to cut this to final size. Once all my sanding is done, I'll blow the whole piece off with the compressor and then I'll clean the whole table with just some water through the spray bottle. I'll wipe it down a couple times making sure it's really clean. This also gives you a chance to get a good look at what your piece looks like, see if there's any scratches that need to be addressed or there's any chips. And then I'll leave this for 24 hours to really dry out. Then the next day before we pour our flood coat epoxy, I'll blow the whole piece off again and make sure it's nice and clean. It's time to put our flood coat on. So I've got a nice batch of flood coat mixed up. I'll put it in a warm water bath to help thin it out a little bit so it flows a little nicer, especially my shop's generally around 55 degrees. So this stuff is a little thicker out like that. And I'll just put my cup upside down to let the rest of it drain out. And with a set of gloves on, I'll now swirl it all around the table, making sure to spread it out and covering all the sides, all the edges, making sure there's nowhere missed. Everything's gotta get covered in this. And then you kinda get to be like a kid again, playing with sticky, gooey stuff for a couple minutes. It's actually kinda fun. It's the whole reason we do this, is to have a little bit of fun. This is definitely a messy process, so make sure you put some plastic down or tarps. This is just a roll of cheap painter's plastic. I've always got tons of it laying around. You don't have to be neat with this. There's really no way to mess this part up. As long as you've mixed your epoxy well and you cover all surfaces, you'll be good. Now make sure you don't leave the torch on any spot too long. But I like to go at a, a slower pace on this to really help pop the bubbles, really help flatten this table up. We just finished our first flood coat. This walnut's gonna be sucking up a ton of epoxy, so you'll get some bubbles. Uh, you can pre-seal the wood with epoxy, I just don't find with this setup I really need to. So over the next 20 minutes, I'll just keep an eye on it, pop all the bubbles. And this is what she looks like after that first pour. It's still wet, it's been about 40 minutes. Uh, we can still see all of that from where it reacted, but it is what it is. There's nothing I can do. We are back about a week later. Uh, in Canada here, we had a couple days that were negative 15, negative 20, which was too cold for me to walk out to my shop. 
So now that it's warmer out, we are back at her. I scuff sanded the whole table with 400 grit sandpaper just to smooth out any lumps or bumps and just to give this a better surface to grip to. And then we just do the same thing we did for the last coat. Pour it on, spread it around with our hand. And on this one, I just really make sure that nothing falls into this. I really wanna make sure my shop is dust free. I'm not gonna do anything in the shop for 24 to 48 hours until this starts to harden up. Now, if for whatever reason you couldn't get this perfect on your second flood coat, just go through the same process again. Scuff sand it, put a third flood coat on it, and you can continue to do this until you get it right. This is directly after that second flood coat. You can see it's still got to level out a bit. Just look for little spots like that that might not have enough. And now for a puppy play break. Because everybody needs a puppy play break. she's dried for a couple days I flipped it over took some 80 grit and got any of the epoxy drips off the bottom and now I'm just laying out my feet for this table these are just little mounting plates that the feet uh, screw into and I'm just spacing them an inch and a half from either edge you can do whatever spacing you want I just chose that for this table it worked out really nice for this one And then I grab my drill with a little 1 8 drill bit and I drill some pilot holes just to make sure I don't break those screws off and that I don't crack this wood when trying to put the screws into it. And I just use an impact to put these screws in. Be gentle because you can snap these heads off pretty easily, especially going into harder woods. And these legs just thread in super easy. They have a little threaded uh, bolt on the end of the leg and then it goes into a little threaded recess in these base plates. Just a super easy setup for these. Super easy to break down to move around as well. I took a little Rubio Monaco and put that on the bottom. It's a hard wax finish. You can put any sort of finish, but I would finish that underside some way just so it doesn't have any moisture damage. The table doesn't warp. Nothing stains up under there. It's definitely worth doing. And then I just sprayed it down with some water, give her a good wipe down, and she is good to go. Then this is what she looked like. I don't know why I took this table out into the garden next to my trees to take these pictures, but I guess I thought it was a good idea at the time. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.